Hey, Jim. Hey, Sean, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, so I invited you for this conversation, transformational conversation, to really explore, well, initially, like, this idea of becoming a boundary architect. Um, I really like the idea of exploring with you. So you're, you're also in the SAS. You're also a very experienced practitioner and transformational leader in your own right. And we've had a very nice deep exploration and it feels like we're only just got going. So I was yeah, like, what a, yeah, what a good opportunity to, yeah, hear more of your experience, exploring this idea of the boundary architect and the, the guardian and, um, and also just for us to just dive deep into it um, and see where that takes us. How's that sound? Yeah, sounds sounds great. Yeah. Um, what's coming to me straight away is I've been quite astonished actually at how powerful this boundary course has been for me. Um, yeah, I almost feel like it's it's I've grown more through the boundary course than even the SAS, which has been really great in its own way. And the reason is that I I can see that through my own practice, it's very tuned in to dropping into what we could call presence and recognizing um yeah, the experience I'm having and objectifying the different aspects that are arising and seeing myself as that deep ground of awareness that is experiencing all that's arising. And then even that extra beautiful step of realizing that everything is arising out of that same ground. And yeah, the joy of that discovery and <laughs> seeing that in my own life and in my own connections and relationships, uh, there was still struggle. There was still, yeah, a sense of constraint. And I, I didn't really feel like I was finding myself able to express myself fully. Mm. Yeah, and, and a lot of longing for kind of more sort of smoother, richer connections. And a curiosity around that, like what was going on there. And in the boundary course, what I started to realize was that I was actually quite afraid of having lines. Or like, you know, we like to use the word lines, will turn to, to boundaries. It's a, I quite like lines as well. It feels a bit less in, imposing somehow. Mm -hmm. I think I, yeah, I can see that I used to, I fear setting lines because I associated it with sort of conflict and sort of aggression and potential uh, rejection. Or... So I, I seem to have avoided, have, have avoided going there and instead have these structures, these coping structures that I created to try and avoid the issue of a, of having a boundary. And that was what was creating all of all of the constraint in my relating. Yeah, so, just as you share this, it's um hmm. it's amazing. I've just spent like a month pretty intensely writing a like an article that's turned into an ebook on boundaries. And the way you're speaking now is so in alignment with what got refined in this writing process for me mm -hmm. and through the course as well at the same time. Um, and, and there's such a um, similar story that you're sharing to what was kind of my journey the last three years, like uh, four years actually, um, like very... Uh, touched by circling and meditation and all these practices that have 
been amazing at giving me the sense of presence and uh, unity consciousness or and yet and also amazing intimacy which i know we both experience in our practices with people and hmm. then having this like like these i don't know conflicts or things not fully something not and for me it was more in my body like not feeling fully well and like energized so it was like not realizing that it was something around connection that was also quite big in that because I, I thought I'd got connection nailed but boundaries turned out to be huge and and I like you like also resonating with this calling it lines yeah because one thing I find with the discussion about boundaries is I actually find some ways uh, I see that get explored or talked about it almost feels like a kind of covert aggression to it and it becomes like almost like a stay away from me or a, like a like are oh, you crossing my boundaries and like it, and it, it doesn't seem to actually foster which i think it can do which is actually just deeper intimacy and clarity in our relationships um so yeah I like this word line because it's like you're drawing it and it's um yeah, like it can be redrawn and like and we're kind of participating with like with reality and drawing those lines. Yeah, that really resonates. Um as you were speaking then I was just experiencing it in myself. The, the kind of ways in which as I as I started to tune into oh there's something here around boundaries and in my sort of clumsy attempts <laughs> to try to try and bring them in you know uh, where you know, there's a sort of victimhood lurking behind the boundary setting or some kind of yeah Quite, quite aggressive kind of aggrandizement. That, so that's my boundary, you know. <laughs> and like, it always has a really like bad impact when you bring it in that way. Actually, I was sharing a story in the group of a journey I've been on with my wife in my relationship. And yeah, really sort of trying all those different ways to to bring in some lines and like failing dismally to to kind of hit that sweet spot so i think this is for me what what's been amazing about the boundary course is that it's really helped me to to first of all recognize when a line has been crossed and to and to really honor that uh but then in order to to bring the realization of that line being crossed in a way i like that word foster that you just used that fosters potential intimacy and connection like deeper connection uh that that's the architect bit right that's the bit that has been really new for me and my experience with that with with my wife for example is as i really tuned in to that nuance to bring that skillfulness uh she heard it straight away <laughs> and there's this this sort of delicious falling into each other and a deepening mm. of of our relationship that's just been so exquisite and so that for me, the, the, those are those two components is the way I, I've kind of taken it on board myself is one, recognizing when something's not right. It's like, oh, something is not right. And then taking a moment just to slow down and tune into myself and bring what I've noticed in such a way that it actually fosters deeper connection. Mm. yeah it's uh 
the bit that stands out when you say like like notice and the metaphor I was using that came to me is the guardian um it's like noticing the guardian kind of perk up and be like something's happening here there's a there's a boundary here that's important yeah I I I like the metaphor of like the ripple in the force using a Star Wars analogy. <laughs> it's like, you know, something's off, but if you don't address it, which is quite easy to do, because it's still easy to ignore those little like intuitions. But when you get that ripple in the force, something's not quite right. If you can turn towards that and address what's coming up. Yeah. Like you say that the opportunities deep. Yeah, uh, what you just said, that's the other part that's fundamental for me, is when I ignore or turn away from those impulses, like those ripples in the force, mm -hmm. I like yeah. that. Actually, what I've realized is that that's what creates the tension in, in my system. Because it's like on some level I'm saying to myself, I don't, I don't trust and value myself. And I, I feel a contraction around that. Whereas when the opposite's true, when I hear that impulse and I turn towards it and I'm I'm listening for how to express that in the most sort of optimal way, then I get the opposite. It's like I, I start to feel a relaxation. So I like the word guardian because it's like it's like my system knows, ah, the guardian is here and is active and is being acknowledged, and so I can relax. And it, yeah, I want I would even take that further. And I know this is something you you were bringing in in the course, which is that 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 sense of knowing that something's up, <clears throat> like that that sense comes right from that unitive ground of our being. And so, yeah, it's like, if I'm listening to that, it's almost, it's almost like in, an invitation into being aligned with that voice moving through me. And th this is why it's so fundamental for me, because this for me is what it's all about. Like all the practice that I've been doing prior to coming into circling. And I know on our SAS course, you were talking about a vision for circling. My vision for circling is exactly that. It's, it's operating from that intuitive voice that's coming through me. Mm. And so boundaries for me are inextricably woven into that. Because if I'm not, I'm not hearing that voice inside me when a line has been crossed, then I'm not connected to it. And I, I, use, I know you call it um, a causal alignment. I like that. I mean, you could say, I know like people might get sort of a, a bit argumentative about it. You could say, well, we're always aligned because that's all there is, right? It's like, <laughs> it's like you're always aligned, but actually, although there's truth to that of course if if i'm unconscious of ways that i'm operating mm. that are actually constraining my expression then appreciating that point of view doesn't really count for much because as yeah. soon as i start to tune in to where where i'm unconsciously acting out patterns or strategies that i developed early in life and I, I'm able to see them objectively and simultaneously hear that intuitive movement and respond from that place that's that to me is what the whole journey is is about so yeah the circling and the boundaries focus on boundaries are a kind of beautiful combination to, to go deeper into that territory yeah there's almost like a beautiful poetry about what you're sharing because it's in some ways and i think this caught me out previously 
almost in my longing for this unitive experience or to to really wake up to consciousness or you know aliveness it was like my longing and, and actually my vulnerability that I didn't really really f like feel it on the deepest level it was like there was this like inadequacy and and I think the the inquiry into or the practice to go into unitive consciousness is such a good one because it's like it really helps you get in touch with the inadequacy and the longing and but that I think in that and also like encircling even the name it's like a circle and like unitive it's like a unit it's it it seems almost like opposed to a line yeah, I see. And, yeah and so boundaries is like a line and then you got this circle so you're like it's easy to actually judge like personal needs and wants as maybe not you know being egoic or not fully connected to that and and i don't think any of us did that naively like there was just we were we were aware that boundaries were important and but um that's my sense but when when i really saw like oh my god they're very important and not just for my own well-being which is definitely enough like i would do it just for my own well-being but that well-being is like you know connecting to this deeper ground and um that was just such an a like a surprising discovery when I started being mentored in this territory. It was like I was starting to set these lines, and it was literally like to to help me function better and like um even though in lots of ways I was getting amazing things from all these practices, there was still something that was like there was a struggle that was linking to my health and it actually turned out to be yeah setting these clear lines was a huge part of that and I was just getting this realignment happening it was like oh my god just letting someone know like that I wasn't willing to participate in that way or or that I needed this if we were going to stay in connection like I needed curiosity if you're going to say anything about my experience or finding a way to to voice what was true and the line for me that wasn't judging or demanding anything of the other that that took some time but once I did that I was really surprised by the transmission of that for me so it was like not only was it like oh, a relief and but it relaxed my nervous system on a deep level and then it relaxed me into something and it in a weird way, it was like suddenly like my life went like Tuk! just a little bit more, like Tuk! Mm. a little bit more centered. And not just in that relationship, in in like it in general. Just being able to stand for something in an important relationship, uh, really stand for a value I needed. Well, there's so much in that is coming up while you're speaking. It feels really complex. Um, I'm curious, as you're speaking about the illness that you were experiencing, did you find that as you started to yeah, stand for these lines that, that there was a sort of remission in that illness that you found yourself improving, right? Yeah. So it was almost as if not honouring that impulse in you was actually making you sick. Well, it was there was like a combination of things. So, I, I did have like some quite serious operations early, early in my life, and so there was something connected to this, and um, and there were things I other things I did that were powerful, like, um, yeah, that helped me kind of recover. But this was a, such a huge part because it's it's it can be so easy to underestimate like how important like a line can be so like for instance say like in my work I've got a great relationship with my business partner everyone knows John like in a lot of ways we we can go to the deepest territory but then if we've got like slightly 
unclear roles in our work together, then suddenly, like without us both knowing it usually, like one of us is not doing what they fully want to do. So that's creating something like if you're not doing really what you want to do because something's unclear and, and you don't realize it's unclear. And then the other one's like maybe relying a little bit too much on the other one to hold something because it's not clear. And, and that's not helping. Like if you're not taking as much responsibility as you should. So just this little unclarity of the boundary of like, what are our roles here? Suddenly, like there's this deeper, like one's being disempowered um, from their full responsibility and the other one's not showing up fully or is, is holding back. That's just huge on the life force and that's going to affect everything else then. And that's just one little thing. That's just like, you know, role clarity. Yeah. Well, what yeah. if like, like one thing that I started to notice was I allowed people to give me advice or kind of subtle coaching when I wasn't really wanting it, but I was subtly asking for it out of this like longing to feel more vital and more unified. Mm. I would kind of, in a way, solicit kind of coaching but then people would also assume that they can kind of just give me a little bit of advice on something. But what I started to notice was that has a huge impact because suddenly someone's took a role with me. So I've actually accepted a kind of one down position and that can be wonderful when it's set up, right? Like I love being like in a one, one down position to someone's excellent coaching or whatever but not when it's just suddenly like subtly on the fly or, or if even someone I'm leading and like suddenly I've like something's happened ripple in the force. And if I don't address it, what I start to see is the activation is unbelievable. Mm. I mean, I, I work with people now who something happened three months ago. These are conscious people, well-practiced, like bright as anything three months later they're still in a kind of activation that's making them unclear about things and unconfident in some way mm. and and it's like we go back to the original boundary and suddenly it's like oh, oh i can relax yeah that's it i didn't like the way i was spoken to there and and when i suppressed that since then i've just hadn't <laughs> I've not felt my power Oh man, it's just so much <laughs> far enough in my head right now. <laughs> imagine, imagine a lifetime of not honouring those moments and the sort of congealed clustering of all of that tension and the, around. And the activation is so heavy. Like when you let a boundary cross, like you get. But you keep going in the energy. Yeah, as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just what was coming when you were talking about you and John and the, and the clarity of agreements. It's like, oh, yeah, it's felt such a sort of relief around, for me, recognizing that when I when I sort of dare, and I even want to use that word because that's how it felt initially, I dare to try to make these agreements. Actually, they they invite deeper connection, deeper <laughs> You know, and the fear is that you're going to alienate people and and reject people feel rejected. But actually, the great discovery is that the actual opposite is what happens. But you know, we we actually feel closer, and the, mm -hmm. with the clarity enables us to sort of trust each other more, almost. And such an amazing discovery. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that was popping up, and I, for a moment, I just found myself beaming with joy, like just so much joy coming through me when you were speaking about vulnerability. Um, so I, I've noticed, even in the last few months, uh, the amount of time I spend in that kind of vulnerable space, where I feel like I'm really offering my heart 
really openly has just increased so much more mm. because it's almost like I I know I trust myself. I know my my guardian is here and is online and is absolutely listened to as soon as it starts to kind of go hey hey <laughs> <laughs> and I know I can bring what's what's mm. what's happening in a in a skillful way and just the relaxation in my system and and the willingness to to show that deep vulnerability has just increased so much mm. And I've seen the impact in the groups that I hold uh, in in that, yeah, somehow as as I go into that space more readily, it's almost like people, others are, are willing to go there too. And so, yeah, we just get this sort of exquisite deliciousness of, of the whole group being willing to go that extra step mm. and, and reveal even more mm. of themselves in the moment. And and again, I can I can see right at the root of that is again getting this kind of boundary work, get really exploring it deeply and, and integrating it into the way I, I bring myself. Yeah, I I get curious on two things. First, like that makes total sense to me that from this sense of like you've got your own back or that's where I think the name originally came. Like I was talking to uh, when I was training leaders in the SAS and I, I was starting to talk to, to them about this. It, it just came to me of like, oh, yeah, it, like, have are you the guardian of your own inner world? Um, and And it kind of invokes the guardian. It's like, to me, it invokes, it's not like a guard. That's ju job is just like to like defend, although it's got a bit of that in there, guardian. Mm -hmm. But it also a guardian feels like the, you know the guardian angel or the like. It's mm -hmm. kind of looking over you or looking out for you. It's it's the eyes for you, and it's really for you, like the guardian. Um, so it's got both the the power and that that kind of support. Um, and archetypally, like I used in the course of the, that, you know, the, it's called Hammerdell from the like Thor movies. But it's a good representation for me because he's kind of stoic and he's like, and he's a tough warrior and he kind of just, and he can see where no one else can see. But actually, what as you get to know the character, he's also got this incredible depth it's like a it's kind of very spiritual um figure actually um and incredible incredi incredibly loved by the other kind of hero characters mm. and that's really what i like i think that's a good archetypal archetypal depiction of this quality in us because like when you honor this you know first it's like oh like something's up here and then it can be like, oh no, do I have to lean in, or, or, and and to to clar like something as simple as clarifying a role, or, um, or letting someone know, like, oh yeah, if we're gonna discuss this, I need to feel there's like a sense of, um, presence or equal listening as we explore this. The, the vulnerability of that is if you say that's your value and what you stand for, they might not agree or they might not show up in a way that you feel they are in alignment with what you value. And then that's where the real boundary comes in then. So you've got to be willing then to be like, okay, I'm going to step out then. Yeah, that's all well and good if it's someone who's not close to you, but if it's someone close to you, that fear that you it may end in that is like you know, makes us hold back our guardian or puts the guardian into unconsciousness mm. and it's understandable if you're going to lose someone you really care about but the truth is like 
if you haven't got your personal truth online and your real boundaries conscious, are you really with them fully anyway? Yeah, I'm just noticing some pain as you're sharing that. And I'm just imagining that's how it all starts, you know, when you're mm. younger and you, yeah, you can't afford to lose <laughs> mum or dad or whoever it is. Mm. And, and so you have to, yeah, I just feel a little bit of grief here now, like mm. the abandonment of, of that sort of self honoring. Oh, yeah. Hmm. yeah my presence is getting really thick now and hmm. it's almost like light is <laughs> shining through the computer at me if you share that grief yeah and you, as you say that you, the the word you used before of the guardian angel <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't heard you say that before and that really lit me up it's like oh that makes so much sense to me mm. that was actually a new expression that just came through our connection actually I'd never... yeah well I love that it, it, even even that grief I was just experiencing as I you I think you used the word light or something and I, I just saw that guardian angel again and then immediately I felt very uplifted. It's a very quick switch in in energy. And, mm. and then, yeah, now I'm just um, remembering another one of your pointings in the course around this curiosity. So, you know, when when you first notice something isn't quite right, and just initially just bringing that curiosity as that oh yeah was that was that a was that a judgment then or is it that you you want to coach me right now and it just and so often it can like really save the moment going having to go any anywhere deeper it's like oh yeah oh it was yeah I was just sorry about <laughs> that and then it's done and we're moving on right and you've you've held your your line but You've done it in such a delicate way that you know, we haven't we haven't had to go into any deeper territory at all. Yeah, that's a good one. And, and that one was <laughs> that was one of those hard one <laughs> realizations <laughs> where, yeah, I mean it's it's so it's so empowering to 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 come forward. Because one of the insights I got, which I've been sharing and practicing with you guys, is like when there's been this more serious sense of a line not being right, and rather than like judging or especially telling someone that they've crossed a boundary with you, is is dodgy territory because you're already judging where yeah. they're coming from. There's a a lot of connotations to that because it's a little bit like saying you've just violated me um so it's like and did they know where the line was and like who's responsible for that so it, it puts a lot of responsibility on them or and it's not really clear what's being communicated so and often people really really care about your lines and your boundaries so if you accuse them that they've crossed it it's like often and and they'll often try and be kind of honoring of you in those moments but they're often feeling quite hurt as well because you've actually crossed the line with them probably in accusing them yeah that's the other thing that that was really great to explore together in the course was that recognizing when i'm crossing other people's boundary without even knowing it mm -hmm. And becoming much more sensitive to that. And I've noticed that something's changed mm. for me in the way I am with others. I'm much more respectful when I'm a, when I'm approaching them as as to whether I'm, yeah, crossing a boundary for them. And that, that's certainly something I'm I would think I was less aware of before or not not so conscious of. Yeah, I may have been doing it more intuitively, but actually sort of distilling it out consciously as an actual thing yeah. 
I, I find that really helpful actually. Do you have like examples of that or like to, to illustrate that? I'm just thinking now, like when I'm working with someone, uh, sort of in, inviting them to go deeper, like doing it in a much, much more sensitive way that sort of honors their own pace and yeah so it's not it's not like sort of giving this sort of penetrating wisdom that's gonna just sort of blow them open <laughs> <laughs> which which is certainly something i've somewhere i've been in the past you know like mm -hmm. people have often that was often some of the feedback oh yeah i really love this sort of penetrating clarity that you bring and that, so actually, you know, it's been quite interesting to to let go of some of that um, and notice that I can let go of it quite easily. So that's really nice. It's not like something I've become identified with mm -hmm. and allowing myself to be much more gentle so that maybe mm -hmm. those insights are, are kind of coming from the person. Yeah. Yeah, did it? did it land for you because it's quite a subtle distinction because a, a lot of where the in, what where the real insight came for me and the, the kind of becoming a boundary architect was um well there was two things there was one being in some very contentious connections and i want to get to that because that's its own <laughs> it's its own thing mm -hmm. but then um it was seeing that like where the guardian stands is on where that line is for me is like the line between my like inner world and like uh, the, you could say the outside world, but it's a little more subtle than that. It's actually like my inner world is, is probably I'd say starts being subconscious and then it goes into unconscious. So like respecting the guardian is actually respecting someone's subconscious, unconscious part of them. Hmm. And so we get, we get really refined at seeing like when we are actually in our communication, wanting to enter into what's kind of either subconscious or unconscious in another. And that's where our refinement is coming and our skill is coming, seeing when either someone's trying to enter or speak of or influence our inner experience and and even ourselves because we we can even cross our own line in a way that's less yeah. skillful but it's like so if someone gives advice so if i like say to you like oh yeah i think you should really embody your your warrior more and like really bring it into your body yeah. I've I'm making assumptions about how potentially new needs to manifest. I'm giving you an image for it and and I'm totally getting involved in your experience. And I can't actually see into that depth. So I'm only making inferences from my my previous experience or or you know so, some sense of you but I actually have to cross that line to make an assumption like that. And, and then if I do that with you and we haven't got a, an agreement and an exploration to do that within, or we, even if we have, and I do it in a way that doesn't feel respectful to your guardian, hmm. the guardian's like, hang on a second, like you know, Jim's the master of his own destiny in the end. Like it's great to have fellow travelers, but you know, no one's like, going to assume that the, the running of this ship and so the guardian's there for that um yeah i just wonder if that was like that resonates for you yeah i've got the word um inner sanctum coming mm. up a phrase inner sanctum That's... and uh, there's a quote coming uh i think it's a gurdjieff quote <laughs> nice. it's something like um yeah you 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 take your shoes off when you're walking into heaven, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that is really nice. Yeah, and it feels like that. It's like 
you you're now on the on the sort of forefront of someone's inner sanctum and then there's a sort of deep honoring and respect that's mm. required if you're going to be in that territory mm. yeah mm. and and i can feel now like previously and i think this is common for i think for people that are attracted to circling and depth work is like my longing to go into my subconscious and my unconscious. I was so longing for that. At least I thought I was. And, um, you know, there's so much drive, there's so much willingness with, you know, the practices we do, which are dynamite for going into your unconscious. And, uh, and well, that's an interesting saying, they can be dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully with this boundary architect, it's less dynamite and more, you know the subtle martial artist that and the interesting thing i found also is when i stand on that line and actually like if someone's going to come in with me or if i invite someone in i actually really have to create the like what i need for that to happen ironically makes me feel actually I'm, i can access more of my subconscious and unconscious whereas previously i was like making myself very available and like you know someone would come at me with like harsh kind of feedback and i'd be like oh okay i want to discover this so i'd be like wincing and like trying to like learn from it and, mm -hmm. and and then i'd get into these contentious uh connections where someone would be continually being very accusatory and very like harsh and um withdrawing and then and then coming close with another like and it was like I thought I like I, I thought I was doing amazing at being skillful at that and like being able to find the vulnerability showing up in it again like finding the thing that they were right about and then and then like then that would bring connection but it would be like I was doing so much work like <laughs> and then it was like and it wouldn't last that long because we weren't actually meeting in a like yeah clear values um there, there wasn't clear boundaries around what what the connection was really about actually so that was like a huge huge learning man i hear all of that i've <laughs> so i've so been down that road i must <laughs> i must feel like yeah all of that trying to manage is is a kind of good example of the strategies that I developed to avoid having to face into the, the the truth of having a lie and then and the fear of what that might imply I remember in one of the SL's um, surrender leadership sessions we did on the course having a sort of real-time realization of of just how fearful I was around losing someone if i set the line even like a like we're talking about contentious people that you know or situations like not just in relationships like close relationships but in my work like wanting to keep everyone on board and mm. um, because it, yeah somehow not wanting to lose a client or something or yeah or, want, or wanting everyone to have some great experience or something which is quite a sweet intention, but <laughs> you know, I, I've got some sort of compassion for my those parts of me that kind of want everyone to enjoy it or, or get something out of it or you know have some sort of deep transformative realization. Yeah. But then, but then seeing how in trying to enable that to happen, I was constantly neglecting something that was signaling inside of me that this is not okay it needs to be a line here and I, i've had a couple of moments that where it, it became really difficult mm. uh, and it is almost like yeah life making the lesson very very <laughs> loud <laughs> like jim have you got it yet do you want a bit more volume so you can get it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I feel like I started to get it. So, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Well, it's it resonates as well for me, and because it it was getting loud in yeah in some contentious connections and mm. and what you share about yeah wanting yeah wanting to it's the circle again wanting to include and mm, like yeah and and the imagine it there was always this like imagining of like oh if they go away and i i i, I wasn't willing to meet them or and and this is the danger of developing these like capacities of empathy and connection that you can go very far in and you can feel all all this discomfort and you've developed these yeah refined ways to really hear people which are is amazing like what that can bring online but then if that's going over actually what you really need to be in connection with someone like what you really value and and, and obviously we have to stand by those values as well like if we're asking for someone to be curious about yeah. us and we're not really curious about the other then obviously that's but what i find is standing up for those values i actually did look at myself and was like oh yeah i, I make mistakes but if i look at all my close relationships they're full of curiosity and listening and like understanding and intimacy and so most of my relationships, that's actually established and and going well. So in this connection, if if I'm accepting that all these bad things about me or being willing to look at them and it's it's not actually an accurate reflection of my relationships, um, that's one thing that I saw. So I could I could I was on solid ground to ask for you know these values that I was showing in my relationships um and then it obviously then became very obvious when the other person wasn't willing um but then the 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 causal alignment thing that we talked about earlier when suddenly life just kind of goes boom mm. it was like that fear of like oh if people go away with a bad experience and like but it was like when a line was shared without judging or demanding anything like or withdrawing they create even more activation generally and they're very easy to do but when it was just stated clearly not not to blame them just like this is what the truth is and this is where i'm stepping out it's like it felt like like something cut but in a nice way clean boom yeah and it felt nice that they went off on their path it felt like, oh, actually, that feels more true for me and a bigger gift for them. Like, Mm -hmm. maybe it is better they go on a different journey and and not be, you know, in this exploration with me. And, 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 and if, if they, if there is some regret on their side or some learning, then great, but that's not for me. That's, that's my guardian overstepping. If I'm trying to like give them an experience, it's like, no, I've got to, this is as far as I can go. This is great. There's there's two things firing up in me. One, one is when you did that, it's sort of in, an insight came through. It's like, yeah, the, the original fear is that if I'm not trying to include everyone, yeah, then I'm going to lose people. And part of what I'm about is trying to include everyone. Actually, through the process of what you just described, it's just like we're we're sort of complexifying the situation so that it is actually still that, but it's a, a more a sort of more complex version of that because mm-hmm. everyone is still included, not necessarily in my circle, but in the yeah. greater circle. In so it's like uh, you just dropped just dropped into a more sort of complex understanding of what's happening something like that Um, and i wonder for you because i wonder if like the previous position you were were in wasn't just like a naive like everyone's included like i imagine like there was like there had to be some reasonable level of reciprocity and and it, it there was an obvious sense of like some people were not right for your practice or 
yeah but I, but then this sense of like knowing how much transformation is possible and like how you can get through unbelievable conflicts if you can really stay connected that that actually led to a little bit of an overextension plus yeah. plus that that being connected to maybe some deeper trauma as well but like yeah, yeah. i feel that there's something quite vulnerable here for me in the yeah, I think there was a lot of investment in trying to offer something that was amazing. You know, it's like, mm. like, yeah, what we're doing is is the thing. It's like this is it, and a kind of specialness. Oh, this feels really vulnerable now. <laughs> yeah, a sense of like, yeah, what we're doing is really special, and then yeah, wanting to include everyone in that. And what I'm seeing is th through through the allowing of these lines to be set and some people to sort of not be included maybe or to come and go. Um, it's like a, a part of my identity had to drop away. Mm. And I actually had an experience. Um, it was about, yeah, almost like just six, eight months ago with my whole body started to really itch it's like I just wanted to scratch my skin all all over my body all the time and I, I kind of really felt like yeah this was something was shifting in me and so I I tried to be like be with it use the mindfulness to really be with it and and um as these things we're discussing now like really dropped in like that itching just disappeared um that's why i was quite curious about what you experienced with you, the illness that you were experiencing yeah. it was like some agitation in my nervous system that was displaying itself in the itching seemed to just resolve as that whatever that identity was that yeah believed that what i was doing was something special <laughs> Again, I feel a sort of healthy shame around that. Like... Yeah, well, the, the thing that comes to me, and this this was like maybe the anchor of like really seeing like um, where personal boundaries came from <clears throat> the unitive ground or the, you know, the non-dual you know, ground of our being. Or, but also where it linked to really honoring other people in their journey. And I still see people actually who I really admire in, in couples that don't have this distinction I can see in their relationship and it causes a lot of problems. And, and these problems are like serious because this, this line, well, it feels so important and it's, and it links to also when we're working with people and leading them. And this thing around the guardian that, yeah, you know, we're on this line of our like inner inner world and how that's unfolding. But then there's like a journey we're on in it that's like, you know, coming from our inner world that's guiding us like in, in the life that we've had. And in the life we're meant to lead. And that that path, that path is like, I mean, it seems any um any wisdom tradition would like point to you want God or unity or um intuition or love or whatever it is to be guiding you. You want to be in surrender. You don't want to be using your will to to try and make things happen. That's going to really like you're up against the universe there. So if you you're trying to force things to happen or push things to happen, and so actually this like honoring the guardian is also honoring the like the the inner trajectory of people's own hero and heroine's journey. It's it's having a deep respect for your own and you know, others' life paths and being so humble about 
what role you can play in another's path, but also your own path. Like, mm. Because what we start to see, I imagine this resonates for you, is there isn't kind of a choice about these boundaries. The choice is to ignore it or to go for it. And then usually that means you know, a high level of activation and consequence or like stepping into a new kind of higher alignment that seems what the choice is which isn't really a choice in a way <laughs> um well it is um but so yeah and what i learned with my clients is like even the ones where it's going very well is be really careful how far i go in like assuming i can influence or know or like say anything about what their what their divine calling is and be very respectful there but also when someone attempts to come in with me it's like whoa like i need to feel you you know if you're going to influence or or you seek to influence my journey and that's where it's like you know we can only do this much you know with with our clients and people around us and so if if we've done what we can like then it's up to us to surrender to the divine to hold the people around us mm. and their journeys and that's the ultimate boundary actually that when we do these things like tell people what their experience is or judge them or we kind of step in the hierarchy of, like with we're, we're doing the job of the divine or we're trying to mm. <laughs> how does that all land that's uh, that's that beautiful that's i think that's what i was trying to or what i was pointing to earlier about mm. how it's of just fundamental importance and the, the word that was coming through all that was humility mm. like a real humility and i just i could feel that strength i was talking about in my system as you were speaking it's like Oh, that voice in me is coming from that unitive ground. Mm. And it there's just such relaxation in that. It's like, oh, that's right here. And if I can, yeah, be in alignment with that or notice what's going on in me that tries to sort of constrain me or distort me out of alignment with that, then that's my work in a way. That's what I'm seeing. And I'm just resting more and more deeply in that movement that's coming through me. And as I say, I just feel more ease, more relaxation. It's like everything's okay. And it's this almost like it's kind of ah, sweet joy sort of bubbling up. And I can almost feel the parts of me that felt alienated and fragmented in the past, kind of like coming together and sort of celebrating that realization but yeah i'm almost a little bit shy about speaking about that that it, it you know someone could maybe oh what's who this guy was he he's showing off or something like that mm. just just really allowing myself to experience the, the, the utter delight <laughs> with uh, feeling that connection yeah. and feeling that yeah that sense of guardian and humility yeah, it's, when you describe this, I get a real sense of you know, this thing of things coming into center. But it sounded really like you were also including yeah, you know, the, the parts of you you've discovered that are more vulnerable or like younger or yeah. Yeah, and those parts also seem to respond to this. It's like it's like, ah oh, yeah, there's a safety here now. It's like the strategies for safety that were created because there was no lines or no ground they start to become naturally um no longer required like and, and so they it's like you don't even you don't have to sort of necessarily work on them specifically it's just as you're sensing that true support that like you could call it sovereignty true sovereignty or true autonomy it's like those those old mechanics 
old dynamics can start to kind of like yeah just sort of fall away naturally mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah I, I feel soft this last bit you shared of yeah how that has, has supported you honoring those smaller parts or younger parts uh, yeah, more vulnerable. Hmm. And I, it, I also um, there was something I think there's something in boundaries that that is is also quite a challenge related to this like trusting people's kind of divine path or individual journey not assuming authority and in, in that especially our loved ones like our life partners and i see that all the time just like little bits of advice like oh why don't you do that oh that was good and if it has that energy of like trying to influence the way your life's unfolding even the person next to you you're going to cross that line and that I see that cause so much pain um, but, and it's being done innocently but that move to really be humble and, and, and not assume any kind of role or authority with your partner who you really need an equal partnership with and this, this trust to be you know, the individuals that you are which is also important to the polarity between you anyway like you haven't got boundaries you're going to lose the attraction pretty fast if, if you become if you flatten that out but it's but so that's there's that on the one side but but then when you're with someone you love or it's maybe not your partner it, it, but especially if it's your partner it might be a family member or a good friend and and you see them go towards something that you think is really destructive like what if they're like drinking a lot of alcohol or they're they're going into business with someone that you're like hang on a second this person is not looking very trustable to me so they're going on this path of what seems like destruction to then like honor the boundary that's then a nice challenge because like and I think there's a nuance here because I think it's really important we still honor our guardians. So if someone we're close to is impacting our journey with their whatever they're doing, so they're drinking or mm. and that's really affecting us or our kids who is, you know, we're responsible for, then yeah, we're gonna set strong lines there. Or we I would strongly recommend getting some coaching to help you do that if, if that's difficult. But then but then if it's not actually now affecting my own journey and i've set the lines i need i would actually be crossing their line if if they haven't invited me in i may even ask like can i can i be of support here but if they're like a no or or they're showing clearly that, that it's actually again if i assume a role there I'm assuming that life hasn't got a greater intelligence than me that's actually holding their journey. That there's a greater intelligence there that even though it looks destructive now and like that that life knows what to do and actually I I can step out. And and actually that freedom to step out and trust life and trust that being is good and intelligent and holding us. That's the biggest win, I think, or the biggest realization of this. Yeah, I love that. There's an analogy. I remember writing a piece once. I had this experience with one of my one of my kids when they were they were doing a jigsaw, and uh, it was my eldest son. And he, there was there was a piece. I think it was a wildlife jigsaw, and he had a, a piece of lion head and he couldn't work out where it go where it would go in the jigsaw and then I I was sitting next to him supporting him and I could just see it right I could just see it like it goes there and I was like <laughs> and I, I'm not going to say anything and he's like 
yeah. five minutes later he's still like I mean, this impulse in me building up building up just like wanting to <laughs> and it like this went on for a while and I but I was able to just you know support him like, oh yeah so you've looked over there what what about over this direction and and he slowly and eventually after about 20 minutes of agon, <laughs> agonizing excruciating watching from me he finally found it and he put it in and the joy on his face because he did it right he did it and it was so clear that if if i I'd, I'd pointed it out like who was benefiting from that at all i could see where the, where it goes already he was going to then be defrauded of his experience mm. of of like struggling with trying to find where the piece goes uh and then getting the huge payoff when he when he kind of works through his struggle yeah and it yeah really taught me that sort of deep lesson there about yeah honoring people's process and yeah really questioning what am i trying what's my motivation in trying to intervene here is it really just about validating myself in some way and e easing the tension and and well, easing the discomfort that's, yeah the discomfort but that's that's right like in a in a way though like if if someone you care about is struggling or you know on a path that seems like they're going to miss some of their potential or whatever it is it, it, it impacts us so being willing like you were to be be in that the best you could was part of that joy i imagine that and opened up mm. but just that joy of the also trusting life and there's there's obviously a, a nice dance with children because it's there's also like what i see quite a lot with children in terms of boundaries is parents um in their desire for the circle and the inclusion start actually asking the children to lead like too much like they're, mm. they're kind of leading the family in a way or mm. subtly like oh yeah what do you want to eat oh yeah what where do you want to go here and these little innocent questions actually set the context for the small child to be the one that's deciding really important decisions for them like before actually it seems ready and and actually the the, the role clarity between us and our child is actually we are the guardian for them in their their journey but we've got a with the guardian that's trying to hold it like you, you were doing holding the tension of when to intervene at every opportunity letting them do what they can do for themselves but then not crossing the line of expecting them to do what is ours to do that's a real art um and it's such it's such a good example because I, I think the other good example that's similar to that is around money. So like say your child or your best friend or someone comes to you, like, oh, can I borrow some money? I'm like in a bit of trouble here. Um, it, it's it, You, you want to help. But if that isn't really the truth, you're actually robbing them of the consequences of their own decisions so and that might and especially say it's your son or daughter it's like yeah they've just run up a credit card bill like and it's got horrible <laughs> interest on you want to just wipe that off for them but it's like well then they don't feel the consequences of overspending and like and and you've just used your productivity and what you've managed to to have good boundaries around to create abundance for yourself you're using the access to actually hold the slack for them from their poor boundaries. So it's like, it's not a good deal, almost always. Um, but that willingness to say no there, and and you might even be, you know, be called tight or whatever it is, but it's like, well, if your guardian's there, you won't allow that. But yeah, uh, you've got to stand in that, that yeah. truth. But actually, you'll get that causal alignment if you do it. Um, and, 
of the person you love will have to face life more fully. Um, yeah, from that. Seems like a good, good point to uh, wrap this up. It's been really rich exploring with you. Yeah. Enjoy really the alignment. Rich. Are there any last things you'd like to say before we? Um, there's a lot I could say, but <laughs> <laughs> when we were talking about families and relationships, I mean, there's a whole journey I've been on that I know I shared with you personally a little bit, mm. um, that is completely woven together with this whole topic. Mm. Um, and that, yeah, actually, after, yeah, after about 12 years, we, we got to a point where we couldn't continue in, in a marriage on in the way we were relating. Yeah. And, and so we actually agreed to separate for a while and, yeah, work with some coaching. And from what I remember, because we've explored this before, you actually led that, didn't you? Like you set quite a firm line there. Yeah, I, I feel like my my wife was kind of inviting me to do that. It's almost like that's what she wanted me to do. And I don't, I'm not sure if that was conscious, but, you know, like sometimes, you, like we were talking about before, the situation can come get more and more difficult until you, you can't ignore it anymore and you have to step in. So it was almost like that was what was sort of constellating in our um, relationship. And then like, yeah, just this realizing this is this is at the heart of it. Mm. And then kind of actually I, the person we worked with, one of the things she said when we first met her was she'd just been on this conference um, <clears throat> for marriage, a marriage conference. And the woman that was presenting it got up and at the start she said, said, well, I've been married 14 times. And it's like everyone in the conference is like, oh, my God, why have I come? This woman obviously doesn't know what she's talking about. Right? And then just as everyone was like freaking out, she then added to the same person. And so that that was the point. It's like that that old marriage had to end. Because, yeah, the dynamics weren't healthy. Hmm. And then through through working through this material and really embodying these realizations and then bringing them into the way we relate with one another it's like we were ready to start a new marriage mm -hmm. and and this new marriage that we're in is like so much more beautiful than the old marriage and mm -hmm. it feels yeah incredibly important and profound and the way that I, I see myself, it's almost like, yeah, a new, a new me, a new, a birthing of a new, a new aspect of myself that's coming through. And yeah, I, I guess I'm just accentuating again how fundamental this topic feels for me. Mm. Yeah, it's, it feels really intimate to so be my own journey and continues to be in this course was amazing for me to refine and see where I am still on this journey as much as everyone else and learning some really important things uh, yeah it's been really wonderful to explore with you and, and touched what you shared at the end there but you are your marriage and family it's, uh, it seems very heartfelt when you share it yeah thanks sean and thanks yeah i really enjoyed connecting with you here and exploring the territory together it's great i look forward to to more and more yeah yeah yeah, yeah much appreciation yeah big love yeah take care